And so again, as Heather said, I'm Ken Puffer. I'm the healthcare CTO at ePlus Technology. You know, we're, we're a technology implementation uh, integrator um, you know, for all kinds of networks, security, data center, technologies. I've spent more than 30 years in the IT industry, you know, selling, installing, and supporting you know, computer technology, as we used to call it, um, as both a vendor partner and, you know, an owner operator. Uh, 20 of those years I spent in healthcare as the CTO and CISO of a healthcare system on the East Coast. So as we get into the presentation, I'm going to kind of, you know, I'm going to start with the agenda, which you can see here, IoT devices, you know, what they are. I know you know, pretty much everybody knows what an IoT device is, but we're gonna, I really wanna start with, you know, uh, a common definition. Uh, IoT devices in healthcare and other industries, as I said, the majority of my career I've spent in the healthcare industries, and we'll, you know, get into why that's relevant outside of healthcare. Uh, how IoT devices enter an organization, identifying profiling, and you can read the rest, asset management, and of course, we're gonna end with the most interesting topic of all, governance, risk, and compliance, or GRC. So I'm gonna start with a, uh, you know, a, a bit of a spoiler alert, everything's part of our complex environment. So we all have an idea of what IoT is and what it means, um, but, want to make sure again that we're operating under the same definition because the variety and number of devices and where they're being used is increasing you know every year uh, along with the benefits come risks that that we really have to be aware of so we can make good well-informed decisions about them um, when i first heard the term iot back in the you know early 2000s i, I wasn't sure what it was intended to be and how or if it, it really differed from the connected devices that we had already been setting up for, for years. Some of the earliest devices I can remember, you know, went into buildings to manage heating and cooling um, and air exchanges and others, you know, from an IT perspective, were our printers and scanners and, you know, a lot of those devices that didn't have a lot of intelligence, but connected to the network so that we could, you know, in the case of a printer, we could send a print job to it, go and pick it up, uh, scanners, you know, um, or multifunction devices as they became, we could do a lot of different things. So we even, you know, uh, installed a, a lightweight purpose-built, you know, network time server back when there really was not a lot of internet connectivity uh, to be our NTP server to uh, had an outside antenna, sync time, you know, for our computer servers, you know, and eventually clocks of, around the hospital. So we all had, you know, working off the, the same timing. So what we're going to, where we're going to start here on, on IoT devices and examples is really on the consumer side. So we'll fast forward a couple of decades to today and we find IoT devices all over the place in our daily lives. We interact with them, you know, often without thought as they add a level of convenience, control, you know, and source of information that we've quickly become accustomed to. You know, we use them at home to monitor our surroundings, manage our health by measuring step counts, heart rates, um, or even manage the temperature in our homes, you know, automatically. Uh, maybe on a schedule to control energy costs, you know, or even change the channel you know, uh, using a voice assistant. Uh, so, and what we find are, you know, as that technology is even moving into vehicles. Um, they, they tend to connect, you know, have the capability to connect over the internet via multiple, multiple ways, you know, Wi-Fi, cellular data, um, and other vehicle specific network connections you know, to get uh, updates to the to your car, um, diagnostic information, share that with some companies. And, and even for, you know, in the case of like uh, Tesla, and this is an, an endorsement to enable features. So, you know, the, this is 
potentially going to become more of the norm and your car is now part of the network. So it becomes very important that we, you know, understand what those devices are, how they're secured, how we're managing them, how we're monitoring and controlling them so that we can protect ourselves, our families and, and our lives. And as we, you know, also look at that list, you know, there, we see that um, our homes have become kind of a microcosm of the scope and scale that IoT de devices have reached. You know, I'm going to move on, you know, to the businesses, um, you know, retail facilities, uh, security, materials management, you know, all include all the things in that previous list, plus everything that you see here and a lot more. So as, as we really be, consider the broader environment, IoT, IoT devices are com really completely ingrained into our activities. You know, there's billions of devices connected to the networks. And you know, what you see here, as I mentioned, is a small, small list um, of the types of devices that we rely on in our businesses and professions, really of every industry, um, to help us be more efficient, productive, informed, and secure. Oops, skip ahead. So the last list that I'm going to provide for you here is related to healthcare. And I'm going to kind of drill into this because I have some experience with it, um, you know, as I mentioned. Uh, healthcare organizations, whether they serve inpatients or outpatients, really kind of rely on all of the device types that we mentioned uh, previously, you know, for building security, materials management, and consumer environments even, uh, to provide care to patients and really accommodate family members and, and staff. You know, I've, I've, the day I started in the hospital, I learned, uh, I learned a lot about hospitals and I began to call them mini cities because they really do provide many of the same services found in the city um, plus your homes within a single facility or, or, the, the, or the whole organization. You know, added that to that are the devices used in the diagnosis, care and treatment of our patients. Um, devices that touch patients, you know, have become called internet of medical things, you know, and they help clinical staff uh, monitor the health and wellness of their patient. You know, the list that you see here is a small, you know, but significant with, you know, devices that provide remote patient monitoring and a possible future that includes a concept that's been started to be talked about over the past couple of years called the hospital at home, where some, some treatments are actually provided by caregivers in the home. It might be, uh, you know, after you're an inpatient in a hospital, you know, they, instead of going to a step down unit or subacute unit in the, in the hospital, they may actually send you home with a condition that's not completely uh, cured yet, if you will, um, but the care for you may be best served at home because patients that do, that go home, even though they might still be sick, um, but get care in the home, you know, they tend to do better and have better, better results. So as, as, you know, so the concept is to bring the patient home sooner, um, but provide some of the monitoring equipment, uh, you know, in the home so we can continue to monitor that patient. So the hospital and the doctors can continue to monitor that patient to make sure that, you know, they're, they're, work, they're uh, recovering the way that, that we expect them to. So that is going to introduce even more complexity, even into our home environments. So back to organizations, you know, we want to look at how IoT enters an organization. So we just identified a lot of devices in the way they're used. You know, as technology professionals, we can best do our jobs by looking at how these devices enter the organization. What we find is that this happens in a variety of ways. You know, we typically break them down into these three main categories. Uh, through IT, through the business units, and really kind of through the public, less controlled means, you know, employees, visitors, guests, contractors. Each of these vectors um, and the degree to which they uh, need to adhere to established 
policies, you know, assuming that we have those onboarding uh, policies uh, exist and the level of organizational dependence on the devices can create risks, you know, ranging from minimal to none, um, you know, like a, a, a guest using their mobile phone or wearing a, a smart watch that's connected to the organization's public Wi-Fi, if at all. Uh, to really kind of critical, where a credit card reader or medical equipment that's connected to an unsecured network um, or a network that's not segmented in such a way that, you know, it becomes a big broadcast domain and, you know, discoverable, which is, you know, one thing that we're going to talk about here in a little bit. So the, the, the information that these devices, you know, generate or has access to, it really should be well understood, properly assessed, and really aligned with the intended business purpose, you know, to make sure that the appropriate security controls are identified and, and implemented. Um, the IT team really has a need to know the who, what, where, when, why, and how um, of these devices and, and processes to be able to do their job properly. You know, devices that enter through IT, you know, like handhelds or, you know, printers that I mentioned before are, are pretty well understood, right, from an IT perspective. And, and they're typically onboarded through standardized IT and, and procurement pro, uh, processes. For devices that enter the, through the business units, though, um, the best way is to have a good, well-communicated and accepted process, you know, that really starts with the right people being involved right from the start. And especially having the IT team, you know, being part or security team being part of that. If you have a project management office, that's fantastic. And your organization, you know, really follows that uh, and follows that process in a you know very regimented way. That's fantastic because we've already, those organizations have already defined what their process is and have you know identified all the key stakeholders. So every new technology goes through into a really standardized evaluation communication process. So, but what happens when uh, you know when that doesn't happen? Uh, so the degree of and involvement from the IT team, you know, they kind of can vary from project to project. Uh, and even though it can seem like a waste of time to some IT folks, you know, like I have worked with some of those those folks, you know, it's really the best a way to have the best outcome for, especially for the important business related process uh, projects. And the last category of entry points that we that we talked about, it's very broad, you know, covers multiple demographics, as I mentioned, you know, employees, business partners, and contractors, and yes, you know, each brings uh, may bring a device that has to touch the network for a different purpose, um, sometimes requiring no or little visibility to the in, to the internal resources that we need to protect. And when that is when that does or to those that have uh, a very specific and potentially, you know, um, very deep need to connect to the network, uh, you know, it's really important that we have the means to identify and, and assist them properly. So, you know, in the case of a, a vendor support, they might need to connect to elevators uh, to do a troubleshooting or, or repair and connect to the network and the control systems. Uh, HVAC equipment, ultrasound machines in, or MRIs or, you know, uh, EKG machines are connected to the network in the healthcare environment and repair personnel may come in and fix the, may or may not need to connect to the same networks that those devices are connected to, um, which could have sensitive information you know, like patient information. So it's really important to be able to have a, a kind of a well-defined and communicated process so we can help those organizations, you know, help the business units get back into production as, as quickly as process uh, as possible. Um, so really in this way, the network has really kind of truly become the information superhighway that, that you know, we started talking about a long time ago. Uh, so really knowing what's traveling on it and how it how it's impacted, how it's designed, secured is, is important uh, for us to to really cover. 
So the next slide that we have here, identifying and profiling IT uh, devices, you know, we covered how IT enters and or IoT devices enter an organization, but how important is it that we discover and identify them, you know, as they come onto the network? You know, one of our questions that we asked was, do you have the, the means to automatically, uh, the tools to automatically identify devices? And we saw really a, a good, mix of automated manual and their you know our our organizations that don't have a way to identify those uh those devices you know it, as the former CISO the security professional you know kind of in me you know we live by the motto of you can't secure what you can't see um, we can expand on this and and add you can't manage what you can't see so it doesn't matter if you're in security if you're in a support role you need to, you know, you may need to monitor and identify and know when something is, you know, either on the network or when it drops off the network before, sometimes before you get that phone call that, hey, this isn't working. So in the case of IoT, you know, it, if you're not watching it, it could create a security gap from a misconfigured or an unpatched device. And without a good process, you know, again, back to the def defining, you know, and writing up uh, kind of a policy and procedure, making sure everybody knows about it. You know, once you don't have, if you don't have that in some way, you know, business can get frustrated when the device doesn't, you know, perform the way they expect. And again, you could get that call and, you know, now you're putting out a fire that, you know, you may have been able to avoid, may not have been able to avoid, but, you know, it, it can reduce that, that stress. You know, most organizations have set expectations on how devices, you know, are introduced, you know, and sometimes it's through policies and procedures, and sometimes it's, you know, in a more tribal form, you know, by word of mouth. But, you know, even with the most well-developed you know, procedures, you know, it's not uncommon to see them coming in through ways that aren't currently covered, you know, in a policy. Um, so really that's where some of the automated discovery tools, you know, can help. Um, so we can still be responsive to the business um, while still being able to identify those, those devices and really begin and take advantage of those tools to get them understand what they're doing, how they're doing it, so that we can put them in the right, you know, network segment, um, get them in the right security, you know, the securities, the right security zone and make sure they can do what they were purchased and intended to do. Uh, so, you know, we're kind of, we're, we'll get into the, you know, the role of well-written policies and procedures, but, you know, I'm, I can't understate the importance of at least having some kind of a document that, really defines, you know, how, how we're going to take care of changes, you know, in, uh, in the IT world, if not the, the broader business world. So, because when there's no clear expectations that, you know, kind of can become a free for all as, you know, as far as your, our end users are concerned, you know, we, we train our teams to live by the IT version of the Holy Trinity, you know, people, process, and technology. Um, IT professionals, you know, uh, we often prefer the technology solution as a means to fix the the problems or or fix the the uh, you know the, the the challenges that we're faced with. Um, there's great tools available out there to help discover IoT uh, devices as they attempt to join the network, and some have the ability to go beyond simple discovery by classifying devices and even profiling as communication and really uh, helping develop the understanding of the information that that or that device or sensor is generating and also where it's uh, sending it or where it's receiving it from. So you can really make sure that you can put some policies um, or, you know, think of them as, as ACLs or access control lists, um, you know, really computer policies to, you know, to, to control, you know, what they're talking to and how they're communicating. So we can really drill down and, and make sure that they're doing exactly and only what they're intended to do. And we'll get into some of the, uh, some of the downsides of that and and also when we you know things kind of fall off the network here in in a little bit um but you know with this great information you know 
uh, how can the security team decide the device is doing what it's supposed to do? Again, we had if we have a great, uh, a really good, well-defined process, you know, for bringing those devices on, we've involved the business units or they've involved us, and and we can understand better and document in our documents, you know, where you know, what the device is supposed to do, how we're supposed to, you know, monitor and manage and support the device, um, you know, and even when we're asked to kind of bend the rules and, you know, coming out of healthcare, different departments, different, you know, people, you know, people of influence, you know, can kind of push those boundaries on us by asking for, you know, something to get done faster. Um, and, you know, again, we don't want to interrupt the business, uh, so we got to, you know, have ways to not put those barriers up and be immovable, but to help bring those things on in such a way that we're getting a message out that we have a formal process, but that we're also uh, doing it in, you know, in a structured and well understood way. So as you might expect, you know, discovering and profiling um, is really essential to, to helping us understand how to really apply effective and non, non-disruptive security controls. And use the word non-disruptive uh, on purpose because when we put in a disruptive or sometimes considered draconian security control, uh, some of our users can look at ways to challenge it, go around it, and the last thing we want to do is to you know, create a, a barrier that causes them to create shadow IT, because then uh, the security people and uh, the support people, you know, they're not going to know about it. They're not going to be able to support it or secure it, and it could introduce risk to the organization. So as we begin discussing security and how it relates to IoT devices, I'm going to say it's always best, always, to take a risk-based approach. Um, many IoT de devices are deceptively simple. Uh, let's face it, they can perform very mundane tasks like temperature monitoring or recording video you know, from a security camera, but they could introduce a vulnerability or an unknown point of entry for a threat actor. And we can start our scenario with questions like, you know, how was the device evaluated before it was put into service? Um, how reputable is the manufacturer? You know, is, did we just buy it from some fly-by-night, quote unquote, not disparaging anybody and or startups, but you know, do they have an established, you know, product and reputation? Uh, you know, so what areas depend on the device and how sensitive in, is the information? You know, in the case of a camera, the images or video that it's capturing, uh, you know, that it collects, you know, and how will that device or sensor be managed and monitored? We can ask these questions, um, you know, during this onboarding process, you know. So if we add automation and organization and orchestration tasks, you know, every time if we introduce that down, you know, uh, down the road, we have to go back and, and reevaluate uh, the risk because if we're from an orchestration standpoint, if we have a you know a, a, a sensor that you know based on a particular threshold is you know communicating with a device that has let's say a temperature control, uh, you know if that device gets compromised, there could be an upstream effect. If it was only displaying that to you know originally just displaying that to a display and somebody had to take a manual step of changing the temperature, you know, the risk is, is less than if it's automatically changing the temperature. And it could be simple as, you know, just increasing our energy costs, but it could be something that, you know, has a, uh, has a far greater uh, impact. So we find that, you know, the, the next topic there is life cycle management. And we find that IoT devices can have really wildly different life cycles. You know, some devices become obsolete in only a few years. You know, while you might find other devices covered in dust, you know, learning that they've been in use for literally a decade or more. Uh, keeping track of these devices, uh, you know, their status, vulnerabilities, and, and sometimes even locations can, can be, a, be problematic and a challenge. 
So and every organization is going to have their own way of managing and monitoring these devices as we've, you know, as we saw from the poll question. But the real point here is, you know, really a reminder that we don't lose track of them. You know, put, in, put into place some way to check to see if the device is, is still being used. It's not uncommon to find that a department has stopped using some technology and forgotten to decommission it properly. You know, they didn't notify IT or IT security, um, you know, and they may not until, and, and then we may not find them until the department moves, which, you know, I, I, I've seen in, in my career. Um, so really kind of putting into place, you know, some way, uh, you know, is, is important because the, the device could potentially become uh, compromised if nobody's paying attention to it. You know, if it's not being in use, being used and all of a sudden starts communicating garbage or becomes, you know, a, uh, a, a point of entry because it's not patched, you know, that, that's, that's a potential security issue. Um, kind of taking care of, you know, and, and going and checking on these things on a regular basis from a, in a manual way, you know, can, can be an onerous process. So, you know, this is a great place to put in some kind of technology that can help to monitor the health of the devices. Now, most organizations have some kind of network management or network monitoring uh, tool, you know, make sure that your IoT devices are also in there. So you have an idea when they, you know, come online, go offline, you get, you can establish the right alerting protocols. Um, you can also, if for more, you know, uh, deeper uh, technologies that we mentioned, we can know who they're connecting to. So in some cases, it's, you know, in a device that's maybe not had or not available to have a, a good patch to it, it could be, com that could be compromised, you know, by monitoring the, the who it's communicating it with and what it's communicating, we might be able to, you know, to stop an attack early, you know, if, if that device has, uh, has east-west vis visibility and even, you know, potentially more impactful if it has north-south visibility. So it could, you know, or in an open broadcast domain, so it could browse the entire network and, you know, that, that attack vector can, uh, that attacker or, or threat actor, you know, can compromise other devices. You know, one of the ways that, that ransomware spreads, you know, there's always an entry point. Um, and from that entry point, then, you know, we launch into, you know, into other areas of, uh, as you know, those attackers um, launch into other areas of, of the organization. Uh, so we can talk about security all day, um, but if we don't security, if we don't consider security kind of part of the business use case, you know, we, we can easily uh, become victim to a compromise, which you know I've seen resulting in an RGE, which, you know, not, not to make light of it, but those are called resume generating events. You know, um, if it sounds like something as simple as a wearable can result in a significant cost in terms of evaluating onboarding, you know, supporting and security technologies and risk, that's because it kind of is. So having a good, well-defined process for evaluation, evaluating the business case while we're, you know, evaluating the devices and really kind of tying those things together is, is really very, very Im important, you know, and, and kind of going to, as I mentioned, we're going to end with, you know, the, the most inter interesting topic of all, um, for very few of us, uh, GRC or governance risk is, and compliance. Um, each employee or business partner or contractor that brings an IoT device or any kind of device in that connects it to the network really needs to be responsible for understanding any of the regulatory requirements, you know, and the rules of the road, say, of the organization. You know, depending upon the industry, one or several regulatory requirements might apply. Um, you know, as an example, in, in retail, uh, you know, anybody that accepts credit cards uh, payments, you have to comply with PCI or the payment card industry. You know, healthcare organizations have to, uh, you know, follow HIPAA and high tech, you know, the Health Information Portability and Accountability Act uh, and high tech, which is the, you know, HIPAA version two, which really start to put some, some teeth and true expectations around how we implement 
security controls for uh, information, you know, but they also might have to comply with PCI and or FDA, maintain FDA compliance and, you know, potentially other local, uh, local uh, zoning or regulatory, um, you know, requirements. So it's really important that, you know, anybody who's coming into the organization, we're, we're, we're part of that, you know, that visit in some way. Um, you know, a, a good and in some cases required uh, practice, you know, is really to write and communicate and post uh, the policies that that establish the clear expectations, you know, reg regarding, you know, we co previously covered evaluation, selection, purchase, implementation, and also decommissioning of IoT devices. So if an asset pol management policy already exists, it may sufficiently, sufficiently uh, you know, cover IoT devices. Um, but you know, if, if during regular policy reminders, if it doesn't, you know, if you're reviewing your policies regularly, you might consider adding examples of IoT since you know, we're, we're covering it today, but it's also you know, really becoming part of you know, a, a, a uh, part of the business, how we conduct business and, the, and their, you know, items that we rely on on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, you know, if you don't have a policy, uh, you know, they, you can create them. Um, there's templates that you can be, you can fi find on the internet or purchase uh, that can be easily modified to fit the organization's need. IT and security and compliance departments, you know, if you have those, you know, they really kind of have a vital role in the construction of poli proper policies and, and, and enforcement, um, but also in reviewing and approving acceptable operational policies that, you know, allow us to really respond to the business, as I mentioned previously, you know, to evaluate, select, implement, you know, and, and manage uh, and support the, these devices. Um, and, you know, kind of finally, proper governance of the devices in terms of the utilization, um, effectiveness, and, and compliance really, from a governance standpoint, really needs to live with the, uh, the business leaders or owners, um, you know, who, who is most responsible for, you know, those devices. A lot of times, you know, that it's like, oh, it's on the network, it's an IT thing, you know, and IT has a responsibility for, you know, for all of it um, after the decision is made by a business unit to buy it. But, you know, in, in real terms, IT can't make those decisions on their own for when the device, what a device is doing, how well it's, you know, serving its needs. So we have to have a continual conversation to make sure that, you know, we're finding the right ways to communicate with, with those, uh, you know, with those business business leaders um, to make sure that your IoT devices, again, we know what they are, where they are, how they're being used, and how we're getting them out or replacing them. You know, when the time when the time is right. So that's really the the bulk of uh, my presentation. I thank everybody for you know for their attendance today um, and kind of open it up for Q and A. All right, thanks, Ken. That was really interesting. Um, so, uh, you know, one question for me, just thinking from a networking perspective, uh, you kind of highlighted a, uh, a couple capabilities around being able to, um, get visibility and, um, profiling and, um, you know, onboarding and, uh, even automated security. A lot of that's not typically, you know, the native capabilities of, of the network devices that enterprises have. Uh, so if, I, I, I could have spent, you know, probably another hour starting to talk about IoT, you know, 2.0 with, you know, identi identity and access management capabilities, yeah. you know, how, how are we, you know, really we could have spent a, a ton of time talking about all the different management control planes and, you know. Yeah, and, there's, a, there's an awful identity. lot. So. Yeah. So for an so for an enterprise that's kind of new to this, are there certain things that they should sort of prioritize and in, in looking at first? Well, you know, as with anything that joins the network, um, the the evaluation process, you know, and implementation, uh, whenever you're putting a device on, even one, 
even one that may not seem to have a lot of controls, you know, uh, make sure you understand what those controls are, you know, how the authentication to that device works. And again, from the business case, what that device is intended purposes and make sure that whatever you're putting in for controls around that, you know, be it a firewall or, or a VLAN, you know, what it can see, you have a, you know, really at least uh, documented what that, you know, what that thing can see and how it does its job. Sure. Cool. And um, I think maybe you have time for, uh, we have a, uh, some questions here from the audience. Um, here's one from Olivier. Um, he says, what are some of the Wi-Fi based IOT devices that you regret supporting on an enterprise network? <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps some that, some that have special requirements enabled that have negatively affected primary users. I've well, I, you know, there, there's, you know, from a healthcare perspective, I'm I'm going to say there's, you know, uh, there definitely comes the um, the the biggest challenges are older devices is for healthcare it's older devices that are on wi-fi that don't support modern communication protocols meaning wpa2 um you know and and so when you see those types of devices and from a business standpoint you know that they, they're needed right it could be an x an ekg machine that only supports you know wet um wow what are you going to do you know because the business needs that uh really having that good that good conversation with them about how the how the device is being used when it's up when it's connecting to the network so that it's pulling down the patient you know the patient information so when they're attaching it to the patient it's collecting it and associating that information with the patient and then pushing it back up to you know to the to the primary communicate the information system you know the EKG monitors um, you know th those can be a real challenge you know because you can't because it's an FTA controlled device, you can't just say, all right, I'm replacing this network stack with this network stack so I can support, you know, WPA2 or, you know, other 802.1x, you know, protocols. Um, yeah, they become a real challenge, but you got to do it. And what you do from a security standpoint, you do what you can, you know, you protect them how, how best you can but you also make the organization aware of the level of risk that they introduce into the organization. So you can, you know, replace them at whatever happens to be the earliest convenience or, you know, um, because they might be very critical to the organization. So they may say, Oh, hold on a minute. We, you know, we got to do this now. What's it going to cost us, you know, or at least get it into the next budget cycle. Um, other things, you know, we, you know, voice assistance, um, not mm -hmm. that they're a problem, by any means, um, but you know, what kind of information are they, you know, do they have access to? Are they sharing? Is, you know, how are we managing them? You know, if you have an Amazon Alexa device, you know, that that's tied to an individual, but they're beginning to be used in, you know, in, in hospital rooms. Um, and and the IT team has to have a way to manage those devices, you know, as a group safely and securely. Make sure they're complying with, you know, with HIPAA security uh, regulations. You know, not sharing information or that information is secured. Um, so you know, there there's making a good evaluation of those types of of systems before they join the network and having understanding what they're going to do and how they're going to do it is, you know, is vital. Yeah, I'll second that. Um, IoT devices are usually made to be sold at very large scales, so they're yeah. very, very cost conscious. And uh, often that involves or results in really compromised Wi-Fi performance and, yeah. and bugs and, you know, things that are on the spec sheet that you really, uh, really would wouldn't discover unless you did a, you know, a live demo of, and evaluation of the device. So 
try yeah. to get out ahead of that stuff and and have a look at it before it gets and, purchased and really kind of understanding where you know where your capabilities you know where your boundaries are you know if if you're not the expert at that and you know there's nobody that's an expert at everything you know find somebody that is could be a partner could be you know in in healthcare there's a lot of information sharing you know between different hospitals and and different health systems which doesn't know which doesn't really happen in a lot of other industries um, but especially IT and security departments in in healthcare you know tend to interact and, and share information so you might be now asked to do something um, that somebody else has already you know has already come across your unique situation may vary but you can learn something from them as well yeah for sure all right, Heather, I think that about wraps up the Q&A then. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Ken. That was an awesome session. Thank you, Jim. Um, now we are going to move into our next segment. That's seven minutes with seven signals. So Eric Camuli, um, we've got him on the line. So he's going to hop into this next segment, talk about a product feature with one of our products. So Eric, I'm going to give you the controls here.